Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dutch Gaming, and a new video on our channel looking at how to craft gear to get your Lightning Strike Raider character comfortably clearing high tier maps. Now this is not going to be end end game crafting, there's going to be no meta crafting, it's fairly basic to intermediate stuff, just looking at um, different ways to essence craft, what's available on the bench, how to use harvest, explaining what currency like Blessed Orbs does and what the Eldritch influences can do. If you're comfortable um, crafting gear to get up to this level then this video is probably not going to be much use to you but there will be one out in a few days hopefully that looks at some bigger budget items that you can craft but this is really for beginner to intermediate players who maybe don't have the money to buy stuff on trade that might be ridiculously overpriced and want options to craft on their own um, so without any further ado let's jump in to the guide okay so for rings as i said i recommend amethyst rings 100 percent because cow's resistance is quite hard to get you're going to be stacking resistances elsewhere. So amethyst rings are just a real, real easy way to get 40 plus chaos resistance into your build for two rings. Now, the way I would recommend crafting these early on um, are going to be essences. And I would do the same for your amulet and the same for your rings. The essences you want to use are suffering, which adds cold damage to attacks, torment, which adds lightning damage to attacks, or anguish that adds fire damage to attacks. Early on, flat damage can help quite a lot. On the build so when you're trying to get into t14 maps or maybe improve your character a bit more just away from general life and resistance jewelry these can be really good you might have to roll through a few to get a decent roll but historically these essences are cheap compared to the others lastly they were one c in bulk after like the second day and they didn't really change in price um, because people were bulk farming essences they only really price stuff that's going to sell uh, for two three four cows anything they don't think is going to sell they'll just price for one chaos Someone comes along and says, yeah, I want to buy all 20 for 20 chaos. They're happy. The buyer's happy. It's a win-win. So we'll start with the ring. So with the ring, you're really looking to get some resistances and then life or an open prefix to craft life. If you can end up with something like strength on it, it can be a bit of a bonus. Um, but all you're really looking for is a half decent um, resistance roll and an open prefix. And there's a lot of good stuff that can run. Like you could roll this... Um, essence here which does cold damage to attacks you might hit lightning damage as well and then you've got a decent dps ring so if we roll it with um shrieking essences first of suffering which would be cold damage so you'd roll it on that that's not very good it's got some resistances but nowhere near enough um, for what we're looking for so we'll go again that's got global accuracy not a lot else again you'd roll no that's not very good and that's what i'm saying like you want to make sure the essences are cheap something like this is perfect this would actually fix a lot of potential issues in the build. 15 attributes, very good. 42 intelligence, absolutely awesome. Cold damage to attacks, got it from the essence. 16 auras, amazing. You'd literally just go over to the crafting bench, stick it in, craft your life, recraft axe, that's rubbish. Like craft it to whatever you want to get. I'm just obviously not very lucky with life, am I? There we go, 53. Um, and that's your ring. That's one of your rings sorted. You do exactly the same for the other one. If you had two rings like this, that'd be perfect. 16% all res on each ring is really good. In and attributes would then mean you don't need to worry about attributes on the amulet. So we'll come on to the amulet next. In the amulet, you again are rolling these three essences. Now, ideally on an amulet, you're looking for max attributes. It's not the rarest thing, but it's not that common. And that's why we're using a prefix essence, because it makes sure that we've got a chance of rolling three suffixes and one of them might be increased attributes. So this one was cold damage. So this time we're gonna go ahead and roll for lightning attacks with um, Deafening Essence. So you go there, you'd look at that. Mana, mana regen, life on kill, not really that helpful. Accuracy is not too bad. Ellie damage with attacks is nice. Can't craft life. Not high enough cold damage roll. Car speed doesn't help us. No, nope, that's terrible. So this is what I mean by your amulet might cost you a little more if you're rolling this way. But remember, these are realistically going to be a chaos each. Um, so something like this. It's not got the attributes on it, but it has T3 life. The lightning damage is there. It's got cold resistance. It's got T3 crit multi, and it's got some decks. So what you can do with this is then you can go and craft another prefix. So I would recommend, if you've got an open prefix, I'd always recommend uh, mana cost. So you go over here, non-channeling skills. Done. That's your amulet sorted. Because we've got attributes on the ring, don't have to worry about it on the amulet. So that's how you'd roll your jewelry. The only thing I'd add about the amulet is if you know you're going to want attributes on this, you may as well scour it and apply four um, catalysts that allow 20% attributes. So if we go into my stash, 
and these should be cheap um because no one's going to be playing omni early on so i mean they're not expensive anyway but no one should be playing omni early on so if we go in here and we go metamorph and it's intrinsic catalyst you just need four if you're doing it on a white item so if i just take um, a random piece of jewelry out of here scour it and that's your 20 percent increase attribute modifiers if you're applying catalyst on an item it's much better to do it when it's um white especially if you're going to put expensive things on like prismatic which can be really expensive or fertile for life if it's a piece of jewelry that you're going to roll yourself get the catalyst on it first it will save you a lot of money rather than hitting the item going oh i could really do a res on that and then you've got to spend 20 catalysts that are quite expensive so before we move on to the belt i just want to talk about blessed orbs as these are normally very cheap and they're a really important part of maximizing your jewelry so your agate amulet for example has 18 to 24 to intelligence and strength you want that to be in the higher role so 23 to 24 especially if you're going to put catalysts on it to get those attributes up same for something like rings an amethyst ring will roll from 17 percent chaos resistance to 23 percent again if you've got a decent ring but it's got really really low roll on the implicit use a blessed orb to boost it up a bit don't necessarily waste loads of them trying to get exactly the top roll um, but within the top like five to ten percent is what you're looking for same with rings that do cold lightning or fire resistance they roll from 20 to 30. if you add a fire resistance on one ring and a lightning on another and they were only 20 percent each you're potentially missing out on an easy free 20 percent elemental resistances so don't sleep on blessed orbs they're not normally particularly expensive either um so i would recommend if they're fairly cheap buy some in bulk so that you've got them ready but they drop fairly regularly belt is where we are going to cram all of our resistances so what i would recommend is you actually spend a bit of money craft on your belt to get a good one so we have a heavy belt here it's only item level 73 so it's not me how to roll um like t1 stuff um, but just for the purposes of the crafting video, this will be fine. So we're going to scour it. And I know I want this belt to be all about resistances. So we're going to get that strength requirement a bit higher, either 34 or 35. He says. There we go, 35. Then we are going to put a catalyst on it. We're going to use four prismatic catalysts. These are quite expensive, which is why I say do it before you craft your item. That was four catalysts to get that now whatever we roll is 20 percent increased so let me put all these we'll keep these essences actually for the armor crafting so put all these back this we can use and the essences you're looking for for your belt are going to be shrieking essences or definite essences of hatred wrath or anger now i would recommend not using wrath because you can craft and sell claws with wrath um so all you're going to do is roll on these ideally you want a high life roll and two resistances but if you end up with really good resistances and an open prefix craft life the only issue with life on a belt is it can naturally roll fairly high but you can only craft it to a 55 on the bench so let's start with cold there you go you first one right and you can see what it does because we've actually only rolled t2 lightning and t2 cold and because we get max roll on those and we get the 20%, that belt is already 108% resistances. I mean, we got super lucky with that one. Um, then you'd go over because we've already got life and you would craft Ellie damage with attacks. That is a belt that will last you absolutely ages. You will not need to upgrade that until you really start pumping um, money into your character. So that was probably a bit of a lucky roll. So let's go again. So again, you're going to be using these as and these are only shrieking. I'm not using deafening. Um, so let's do fire this time. So that one is a shame with the life because of it, T1 life. A bit fire resistance, mana, and flasks. So what you could do is craft double essences on that if you're really bothered about the life, because you're going to get quite a lot of extra effect from these. So this has got fire resistance on it. So what you could do is go down, roll cold and lightning. Then you've got 22% on there. So again, that's nearly, or that is that exactly? No, not quite. It's very close to 100%. It's 98% Ellie resistances. So again, that's a really decent belt. So let's keep going. So there again, we've hit an open prefix, 
fire resistance, lightning resistance, craft on life, job done. These are super easy to roll and it's really effective to get your resistances sorted on your belt so that you can free them up on rings and amulets to maybe pack some um, offensive stats into them. Um, again, we've hit chaos res on that. We've hit a decent armor roll, we've hit strength. That's also really good. I will craft life on that. And then your other option, um, although they might be a little bit more expensive, is um, these deafening essences of envy or screaming essences of envy. Guarantees 31 to 35 chaos resistance. You hit one decent resistance roll with this, and it's awesome. Chaos also gets boosted up by the catalyst. It isn't just elemental resistances. Um, so again, you can roll these, but like I say, these are more expensive, so it's a bit more difficult. Um, so something like this, for example, has got an open suffix. You've got your chaos res. You've got a fairly decent life roll and mana, which is never a bad thing. Again, you could craft jewel res on that, but it's kind of not ideal. And then, yeah, hit another decent one. So this one, you've got an open suffix or a prefix, so you could do what you like with this. If you didn't need the resistances, craft early damage to attacks. If you did, you can again craft a dual res on this, even with a chaos one. So you could go up here and say, I just want this belt to be fire resistance and chaos resistance, and I'll get the other things elsewhere. There you go, craft that. You now have a belt, which you've crafted for next to nothing, with 40, no, 55% chaos resistance on it and 53% fire resistance with life and strength, which is also life. That is how I would craft a belt. You can get some absolutely awesome belts for not very much money. Okay, so that covers off the jewelry. Go into the claw now. So for the claw, again, we're essence crafting and we're gonna use essences of wrath. Now these might be quite expensive for deafening, so early on you might wanna go shrieking, but the difference is quite a lot um, of lightning damage in terms of top end, it's like 30 difference, but shrieking are really, really good. So all you're looking to do is roll lightning damage and then attack speed and open prefix or a big cold or fire roll and an open suffix or attack speed. That's really all you need to get you through like your atlas completion. So we would roll this on here. So there we go, we've hit it straight away. First essence, we've hit our claw. We've got essence crafted lightning damage, T2 cold damage, crit multi. We're gonna go over to the bench and we are going to craft attack speed now. According to the screenshots from GGG, this still costs an exalt. Considering exalts are going to be pretty cheap, well, much more cheaper than last week, I would even be tempted to throw that attack speed on it. There we go, hit 20. So if we just quickly plug this item into POB, let's take a look at what it's saying about these stats. So we've hit a 500 LED DPS claw, which is going to be easy enough as long as you get the rest of your gear sorted out to, to do like the Maven and Uber Adder and stuff like that. Crit chance would have been ideal on this. And this claw is actually a really good base. You could metacraft this claw to, to be pretty decent. It's got very good cold damage T2. It's got the essence mod for deafening one for lightning. Yeah, the roll's quite low and divines are expensive, but in general, this claw is pretty decent and might be worth pumping some more money to later. But just for this purposes, and this would easily, yeah, like I say, carry you through like your Uber or Maven stuff. This claw is absolutely fine. And that's how you craft them. Um, so we don't need to keep it anyway. So let's just go again. So that time we haven't hit anything really that we can work with. We've hit, right, can I just take these off? They're annoying me. So this time we've not hit anything we can work with. Yes, we've got an open prefix, but we don't have attack speed. We don't have a secondary damage. So we're going to roll that again. So there we've hit 21% attack speed, which is pretty decent roll. We've hit lightning damage, obviously. We've got some accuracy, which is never a bad thing. We've got stun duration. So this is not ideal. I would want the attack speed to be higher on this claw, but if you're on a budget, that's good enough. Um, so you go on here, onto your bench. Uh, craft cold damage. Let's pump this one into POB. It's obviously going to be nowhere near as high as the other one. But as long as you can get near there or thereabouts to 400, you're fine. Yeah, 389, that claw is borderline but it will do the job. So then we'll go again. I just want to see how, show you how sort of common these sort of rolls are for these claws. Um, so if we go again, that one can't do anything with. This one again, oh, it hasn't got a spare suffix. That would have been pretty decent. Um, roll again, that one is terrible. Again, this time we've hit a tiny crit chance as well. The lightning has rolled pretty low, which is a shame because we're using shrieking now, but again, this is serviceable. Would I keep it? No. The, the, 
13% crit chance is not amazing. 22% attack speed is okay. But again, if we went on here again and just craft our cold damage, this is still going to be way cheaper than buying a claw with the same stat. So again, we'll go in, go into POV, stick that claw in. 360 early DPS. That one probably is a little bit low, but that's because we rolled with shrieking instead of deafening. Um, so these would be like your super budget claws. Um, so we go again. That one, I probably... Yeah, again, you could craft attack speed on it. Not the X one for this because the claw is no in it. Even if X is like 20C, it's probably not worth it. Um, so you'd roll the Chaos one. Put this one in. And that one is actually 400 LED DPS um, because the cold roll on it was decent and the Lantern one rolled higher. So again, perfectly serviceable weapon to get you through um, your Atlas completion. So I think there's plenty of examples there. So that's how you're going to roll your claw. So... Let's move on to the rest of the gear because it's mainly going to be using life essences. So if we start with boots, now the good thing about boots for this build now, can't really use item level 33. Uh, the good thing about boots now is we don't need spell suppression on them because we're getting it from the tree. We don't need ailments because we're getting it from our um, ascendancy and our shield. So these boots can actually be really easy to roll. Um, so what you're looking for is two-tone boots. Eventually, you're going to be putting some Eldritch Currencies on these to get increased action speed and increased elusive effects, but they're both quite rare rolls, so they can cost quite a lot of money to get these attributes on. So until you get a pair of boots that are, you know, you're going to say are your end game boots, I wouldn't bother. We get a really good implicit anyway on two-tone boots with 24% resistance, so let's just stick with that for now. So you definitely want 30 to 35% movement speed on your boots. It just makes the build feel a lot more comfy. You can craft 70 life on boots from the bench. So what you're looking for is movement speed and lots of resistances. If you get life on it, brilliant. If not, just craft it on the bench. If we can stick as much resistances as we can into our boots and our belt, it's going to really help with the rest of the items like chest. If you wanted to run like an influence chest, you lose places where you can roll resistances. Your helmet, you might want to roll some. Again, you might want something different than just resistances. So getting as much as you can into boots and belts can really help. So got a few options here. I would recommend, but they're going to be maybe six chaos each. Definitely in essence, this is zeal because they give you 32% movement speed. So I would recommend using zeal to start with, but they are quite expensive, but they guarantee you movement speed. The other option is you can use life essences if you don't mind having slightly lower movement speed, because on the bench, there are some decent movement speed crafts um, that you can unlock from Syndicate. Uh, so this one's really good. 18 to 20% movement speed, 8 to 12% chance of gain onslaught. That's pretty decent. You could then maybe replace the implicit on your boots with movement speed, and that makes up for the fact that you're only 18 to 20. Uh, but it does feel a bit bad, 20 to 30, but you are going to have onslaught when you're mapping. So let's start with trying to roll some with zeal. Now, I don't have many zeals. In fact, I've only got two that are worthwhile using, but it will show you the process. So... We'd roll that one first. We've hit movement speed, resistance, but we've not got an open prefix. So again, we'd roll here. That is absolute garbage. Again, rubbish. That you could use. It's big light and resistance. It's got your movement speed. You can craft life, but it's not the best. Again, we unfortunately rolled life with that one. And that one, again, you could craft. No, you can't because you've got three prefixes. Um, so that's one of your options is to guarantee movement speed you can do that but boots are flexible you can use life essences if you're happy to craft movement speed you can use movement speed if you're happy to craft life or you can use resistance essences wait till you hit one of movement speed or life and then craft the other one on top um it's probably not quite as good because you do want 30 percent movement speed so it is better to guarantee that um but let's just let's just try it so you'd run um your resistances but these are going to be slightly more expensive because you have to hit life or movement speed and you have to have an open prefix. Um, so these, for example, rolled. These would be perfectly serviceable. It's got cold resistance, lightning resistance, 25% movement speed, 62 life. They would absolutely do you for quite a while. Um, so we'll keep going with the resistance essences. Again, you've hit a really high lightning roll, really high life. You could again cross movement speed and onslaught on those. And then we'll do a couple of examples with life essences. Life essences are good because you guarantee big life, but it might be you've got to settle for lower movement speed. So this, for example, is a pretty decent pair of boots. Lightning resistance, T2 chaos resistance, 
um, 88 live, and then you can go on the bench and craft your movement speed and an onslaught, which we'll do. Um, and as I say, with this, you'd probably then roll movement speed on your Eldritch Implicits, uh, and then that gets you almost to the 30% movement speed, and that's a nice cheap way to craft um, a pair of boots. So what I will say for your body armor, I can't demonstrate it because the craft isn't in the game, but the old Gravisius craft, which is our life as extra ES, is going. And it's being replaced with actually a really good craft, which is Fizz taken as fire and Fizz taken as lightning. I would recommend always crafting that in a chest early on. When you're only getting, say, 15 to 20k armor, shifting physical damage to elemental damage is awesome. And it applies before the armor. So what that does is it'll, it will send some of the damage to elemental. Then the hit applies to your armor, so you're going to mitigate a lot more damage, like a twofold effect. So you wouldn't be using this strength six link, but this is really just for crafting purposes. So I have two shrieking, uh, sorry, seven. So I have seven shrieking essences of greed and two essences uh, of screaming greed. So all we're going to do is roll, looking for resistances. Strength is not too bad either. And then you want an open prefix to craft this new fizz taken as. So Shriek and Essences give really good life to body armor, definitely even more. So there's no essence you would ever roll other than this on your armor, unless you want 15% fizz taken as cold, then you'd use an essence of horror. Um, but I think this craft is now really out of date considering we've got the new um, Gravisius craft. Um, so the first roll I've hit strength and a tiny bit of cold resistance. It has got the open prefix, but that is not good enough for what I'm looking for. So here we have Bit of increased armor, stun and block recovery, fire resistance and strength. Not good enough for what I'm looking for. That's definitely not. That's not, although the armor was nice. So this is like probably the perfect chest for early on. You've hit your life. You've got T2 cold. You've got T2 lightning. You would go over here and then you would benchcraft the new Gravisius mod. Job done. That's your chest sorted. So I may as well do an example um, for a helmet. Let's so say you're looking for plus two lightning pierce helmet. If you can't afford it, you're probably going to have to go and get the nodes in the tree. But by pushing red maps, you should be able to afford at least a plus two. Um, so let's say you had it on this base because it's evasion energy shield. So it's going to be cheaper than getting like armor decks or decks or armor. So again, you're literally just rolling life on these. And you're looking for um, resistances, although at some point you're going to be well over capped on resistances. But that isn't a bad thing because when we start adding maybe influenced items in that won't have the resistances, You've got that buffer that you don't have to go looking to, to recraft all of your gear. Um, so we'll just use the last two screaming ones on this. Again, we don't need spell suppression. Um, so I think I've run out of essences now. I have. But that's what you would do. Again, roll your life ones until you get um, decent resistances. There is a prefix craft, which again at the moment is an exalt. If it stays an exalt, it's a bargain craft which you can unlock from Corel in Syndicate, which is 8% of physical damage taken as fire. So you can end up with 8% from your helmet, then I think you can get an extra 6 or 7, so that'd be 15. You can get around 12 on the chest from the Gravisius craft, so that's 27% physical damage that you send it across to Elemental. We run Determination to get, you know, a half decent amount of armor. You can build a really tanky character early on just by putting a few crafts on your gear. So the last thing we're going to go over is the gloves. I don't have any Eldritch currency though, so I can't do it there. So we're going to have to go into Craft of Exile. I would recommend, if they're cheaper than the others, lesser embers. The reason being is that there are certain mods, like boss mods, that roll on greater and grand embers that don't roll on lesser. So you've got a slightly higher chance of hitting plus one strike if you use lesser embers. So this will count up how many we're using, and it's going to tell us how expensive it is. So it's saying it's about half a chaos per roll, they're probably going to be around a chaos each, I would think. Maybe slightly less if you buy them in bulk, but to be safe, whatever this costs to craft, we're going to double it, and we're going to say that's our craft. Now, it is quite a rare craft. Um, so you bait... Oh, there we go. Um, so for that example, we've hit it in eight orbs, so that would be eight chaos. These gloves are already worth a divine or whatever it's going to be. So that was super lucky, and I seem to always be lucky. Every league I've rolled these gloves, I've rolled them in about three or four. Um, currencies but it's about a one in 50 to do it um so if these were a chaos each then you're 100 percent better off buying them taking a chance at rolling them because a pair of gloves with it on with a decent base are probably going to be 100 chaos um so once you've hit your plus one strike 
you're also looking for plus on pierce but it's not needed at the moment and it might be again it takes you 40 to 50 orbs to roll it and there's not really much else that's decent um you maybe get some increased accuracy i think or accuracy per frenzy charge there's not much else so if you're swimming in currency fine roll your um pierce on there as well but if you're not i really wouldn't bother once you've got your gloves to this stage we're going back to our either essences or you could harvest attack on these um because again you can craft 70 life on gloves so hitting life is not the be all and end all um, so if we go reforge plus attack um because what you can get you can get flat damage you can get attack speed yeah accuracy lots of stuff you can get on the gloves and because we're stacking resistances elsewhere we shouldn't need them on the gloves so i would be looking for something with high damage and high attack speed so as you can see you're going to roll a lot of attack mods so this has got t1 attack speed t4 accuracy mid cold damage or you could craft life on that that's a pretty decent pair of gloves and we go again those ones are rubbish not very good either not very good and no prefix so it depends what this craft is worth as to where they do it i would still recommend essences because they're going to be cheaper um so if we go to our essences and i would be tempted to go zeal on these for attack speed so let's just say they're um that they're, they're that tier two one so it's 16 percent attack speed attack speed is easily the best mod you can get on gloves the other good thing about gloves is there's a ton of good crafts so ideally you do want life on them so what i would do is roll zeal until you hit attack speed life either an open prefix or suffix there's good crafts of both which i'll go over and when we go back to the bench i just want to get a pair of gloves first and um, that look fairly decent and um, so again all i'm looking for on this is attack speed and life I'll be happy with something like 60 life. I'm not that fussy because I don't want to spend too much. So something like this. Not ideal, but it's okay. It's got T2 lightning damage to attack. Pretty good. 55 life. Not the worst. 14% attack speed. A little bit of fire resistance and a tiny bit of life regen. That doesn't matter. The important thing is we've got an open prefix. So if we go back into game and we go to gloves and we have a look at what you can craft. You can craft again. It was an exalt. If it's still an exalt, it's a bargain craft. 37 for 43% increased damage on leeching. That is huge. You can pick up 30% on a tree as well. So you can end up with 70% increased attack damage while leeching. That's pretty big. If that changes to a divine, increased damage during a flask effect is good. You can also get pierce. So you can stack more pierces in the build. Lots of good prefixes. If you ended up with an open suffix, again, there's really good suffixes being able to craft 12 percent attack speed is pretty nice accuracy if you needed a bit of boost uh, if we keep going down this one's pretty decent increased damage with non vile skills during soul gain prevention what that means is as soon as you drop your vile lightning strikes your lightning strike is going to get 60 percent increased damage this one is also really good increased crit chance and increased le damage if you've crit this also can be used if you're someone who likes to use focus. Increased attack and cast speed while focused is absolutely awesome. And then we're going down and we've just got like the resistance modifiers. Um, and this is why I'm saying you want to stack resistances on belt and boots because we don't really have anything else we can roll on those. Same with the helmet. These are the places you want to get your resistances in because we want all our suffixes and prefixes free to do what we want with on the items where we can stack damage. Okay, we're going to look at a shield. Again, we're going to do this in Craft of Exile because I don't have any harvest plots and I can't be bothered to go around at farming harvest to get what I need. So we are going to restart the emulator. We'll move away from our gloves. Shield is super, super easy. I've covered it in a lot of the videos anyway. Um, what I would recommend is doing um, Lack of Buckler because it has the most evasion and 6% uh, movement speed. Item level, really see one as high as you can. Um, but let's say you just get 83 because that's what drops naturally in maps. All this stuff is going to be on my filter. So you're going to be able to get these items all the time. You'll always have crafting bases. So the shield is where we're looking to get our elemental ailment and we need 30%. The easiest way to do it is any of these rolls and they are going to only be 50 life force in harvest. So you should be able to spam quite a few of these. Lightning, fire, cold. You just need normal reforge. If you have a look, we'll have a look when we hit it, which we'll probably hit straight away. So hit the 20%. So if you have a look at this line on elemental elements, you can see that it's got a fire tag, a cold tag, and a lightning tag, which is why it rolls so regularly when you do this. 
if you did really want it to try and guarantee here and it refills more likely, it's obviously more likely because you might hit cold resistance and LE resistance um, or LE elements. Um, so we'll go again. Yep, we hit it, hit it again. So as you can see, elemental elements, if you use more likely, it looks like it rolls even more, um, but it depends how expensive that is. So we've hit our 30% element avoidance, which is all we want. We've actually hit a cold resistance roll, which is nice. Increased evasion on the shield, even better. The evasions are now boosted to 1,000 on this shield. Then all we need to do is go to our crafting bench. And we are just going to craft life. Nice and easy. And you can, again, craft decent life um, on a shield. You can do up to 70. So we'll add that in. There you go. There is your shield that will last you absolutely ages. Massive evasion. All the ailment avoidance that you need to get capped. Cold resistance roll always helps, and then craft life, and that's it. The only thing I would say is if you do not need to craft life, there are some decent suffixes on shield. So shield also has really nice crafts. So if we go down here, it's got attack speed, which you can roll up to 12%, which is quite nice. It's got chance to deal double damage, which can go up to 5%, which again is a really nice craft. This one's even better, I think, if you don't mind using focus. If you combine 15% chance to deal double damage on your focus with the double damage attack speed focused on your gloves, you've got insane burst damage at bosses. And because Raider Lightning Strike doesn't use anywhere near as buttons as some of the other builds, it's quite comfortable to fit in. So that is an option. If you want to get more burst damage for cheap, double damage while focused and attack speed when focused, I'm pretty sure you might be able to get a focus mod on the helmet as well. It can really, really boost your damage up. Um, so we'll just go down here, we'll get rid of that, and then we'll see what else you can roll. They say attack speed is never a bad thing to roll. Accuracy. You can roll up to 220, which might get you up from like 96% chance to hit to 100. Shouldn't need spell suppression. And obviously you've got your resistance crafts um, as well. So if you need some extra chaos, you can do the dual chaos craft. And that's how to craft the shield. Now that covers every item that you need to get yourself T14 viable and really... If you get gear crafted like this, you're going to easily be doing Guardians and Conquerors. You're going to be doing Sirius. You'll be able to do, obviously, the first two um, bosses to get your Void Stones. Maven you could probably do if you know the fight, but it might be you have to do like four or five memory games. But surviving shouldn't really be that much of an issue. Uber Elder, I'd want more DPS, to be honest. Um, but you then just keep going from there. And the next video I'll bring out, I wanted to cover it all in one video, but it would have been too long. And the Google documents take ages to put together. Next video is going to cover the gear you need to craft to really push it to the next stage. So this is going to include your more expensive items. So it might be that in this next guide, the items are two to three divines each. This is going to be the guide to get your damage up to like 10 mil, 15 mil burst damage on as cheap a budget as possible. Um, so that's it for this guide. As I say, the Google Doc is linked in the description. I may change it as I go along as I find out little things that might be wrong with it. Um, but it's certainly a really good placeholder to have for when you're on League Start. Market might be really volatile in terms of buying stuff. At least this document gives you a chance to craft stuff without you having your progression halted because you can't get the items that you need. Um, so as always, thanks for watching. Take care and see you in the next one.